guys, you guys, you gotta check this out. It's it's amazing. It, it's incredible. Look, look what I just got in the mail. Look. They're two pure sine wave inverters. Let's open them up and see what I've got. All right, let's start with the big one. This is a 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter that I just, just got in the mail. smells like it doesn't smell good oh and burnt electronics well, let's try the other one maybe that one's better broken. This should be a broken inverter. You guys didn't think these were going to work, did you? Yes, I bought two broken sine wave inverters. And hopefully I can fix them. I don't know. I didn't pay much for them. I'll give you a close-up here of this one since it's apparently already open. But uh, these are not high quality sine wave inverters like the, uh, the Samlex Go Power Thor series. Um, the industrial series that is. They do have a lesser series similar to this, which is consumer grade. And uh, looking at the insides, I'm not that impressed already, but hopefully I can fix them and uh, make them worth something again. I didn't pay a whole lot for them, and I guess it's a gamble, but we'll see. Here is a closer up of the Powerbright 1500 watt sine wave inverter that I got. This one was advertised just as is here, uh, non-working and without the cover and missing the screws. I actually got a bonus, they shipped the screws with it, or at least there are screws in the box, hopefully they go to it, I don't know. But uh, the construction in here is, well, subpar. Uh, there's blobs of solder all over the place, there's no coating on the board, the surface finish of the printed circuit board shows that it's a very inexpensive circuit board, they didn't spend any money on that. <clears throat> the uh, soldering on it is poorly done. The components were bolted to these heat sinks on both sides improperly. Just typical of your cheapo consumer grade inverters. And I don't have a whole lot bad to say about it except that this inverter is priced way above what it should be considering the quality I'm seeing inside. Anyway, it is broken so I am going to think about this a little bit, how I want to start, and I'll uh, probably let you in on on fixing this thing or failing to one of the two. Well it's only been about 30 seconds of taking a closer look at this thing and I think I already see the problem here. This row of, I think they're TO247's, but this row of transistors over here, like I said, they were mounted improperly and I don't know if you can see it on camera here very well, but uh, there's actually a gap between the heatsink and the edge and the, the bottom heat sinking surface of some of these transistors. Uh, you can't see it very well, but like these two here, they over tightened this mounting screw and this side pulled away from the heat sink. So these aren't even heat synced. And I bet you they overheated and failed. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the problem. But I'll have to look at it closer to determine that. This is a sine wave inverter, so it has more complex control circuitry than some others, making it more difficult to diagnose and less likely to be able to repair it. 
there's just a lot of things on here that's just absolutely disgusting. Over here, hand solder blobs all over the place. Over here, they just kludged this wire on. Over here, this trace was apparently defective on the printed circuit board that they received. So they just scratched away the solder mask and put a blob of solder over it. It's, uh, I could go on, but anyway, this is junk. This thing is absolute junk. I can tell you that before I even turn it on. But I'm going to see if I can fix it and uh, see how it actually operates. Maybe it functions well, even if it is poorly put together and not reliable. We'll have to see. It's also interesting that they give you a couple of, uh, oh, just one, an adjustment potentiometer here. I'm not sure what that does, but I'm going to crank on that and find out. Fun to do. <laughs> Here's the output wires for the output current. Once again, just solder blobbed on. They're not even, <laughs> they're not even connected properly. There's no through hole for them. Anyway, I'm just going to shut up here and, uh, and see if I can figure out what the next step in repairing this. Well, I was going through this inverter, taking it apart, testing all of these transistors, just ohming them out to make sure that they were okay, and I was getting kind of puzzled because pretty much everything inside here looks alright, in terms of function anyway. It certainly doesn't look alright, but that's beside the point. I couldn't find anything wrong. And then I picked it up to turn it around one more time and noticed this. This <laughs> inductor is just rattling around in here. It's not even connected. So, I'm betting that's the problem. And as far as these transistors not heat sinking properly, I will rebend these guys the opposite way and then tighten them properly. And that should solve that problem. Really, it's a design defect. These little uh, um, clamps are not long enough. They should be a little bit longer. They probably tried to save the two cents of material it would have taken to make these a little bit longer. And they're not on there properly because of that. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to get the circuit board out of here. It really isn't made to be disassembled, so I'm probably not going to have very good access, but we'll see what I can do. Alright, I have this partially disassembled. I just took a bunch of screws out and it uh, opened up part way. I would have to start desoldering things and unbolting things to get in here further and I don't think it's necessary. So, right underneath where I'm shining my light is that choke that's now hanging off the board by one lead. Back there, that blob that's in the light, that is one end of the choke and there's a little patch of printed circuit board that is connected to. So I'm going to reattach that. And then up here, you can see where there's this strip of copper that the other side of that choke attaches to. Now this is on the output side, and this is a 1500 watt inverter, so it only needs to be able to handle 12 amps or so. So I'm not too worried about these connections. I'm just going to shove that choke lead back in there, solder it up good, and uh, test it out. If everything works okay, I'll then glue the thing down properly like it apparently wasn't from the factory and hopefully it won't happen again and hopefully this didn't blow something else up when that came loose usually when there's an inductive device this output choke which uh, smooths the PWM pulses usually when something like that comes loose it's pretty nasty on the circuitry inside you get very large voltages and such so it's possible there's more damage but I went through and did a cursory look of everything in here and I couldn't find any other major problems so I suspect this is going to be the only issue. And like I said, those transistors aren't heat sink properly, so I'll fix that while I'm in here also. But first, let's get this thing soldered up and see if that fixes it. Salted nut roll. It's the perfect soldering snack. The inductor has been re-soldered. Just blob some solder on there. It's at least as good as it was from the factory now. And I'll also uh, adhere it down somehow so that it doesn't come loose next time it gets jolted around in shipment or something. Also want to note, I use this uh, Weller solder station. doesn't matter what brand, but for something like this, where there's this much heat sinking, it's really difficult to get a good solder joint unless you have enough heat. So a temperature controlled iron like this is almost necessary in order to do it properly. I have the circuit board screwed back down to the bottom plate. 
this whole heat sink is missing, sitting over there. So these transistors are not heat synced at all, so I can't run this under a very heavy load or for very long. However, this choke is back on there, and it's good enough that I should be able to test it. I have the input hooked up to a power supply over there, 12 volt power supply. And I just have some uh, dummy light bulb loads to do testing along with my multimeter. Now maybe I'm optimistic, but I have this all set up before I've tried it for the first time. Oh, also here I have a clamp meter to see how much current it's drawing, 12 volt current. But let's plug in my power supply and see what happens. Well, no current so far. That's good. Let's see what happens when I turn the power switch on. Seems pretty normal. And I have 113 volts AC out. Seems like this thing might actually work. It's a nice clean sine wave. Tesla's just plugged into it. And let's see what happens when I turn on a 40 watt light bulb. Watch my current here, make sure it doesn't go nuts. Four amps. That is about what it should be. And over here I still have a nice clean sine wave. Let's try that again. Let's try a 100 watt bulb. Huh. Well, that's not a good sign. It just overloaded. And now it is smoking. Hmm. Perhaps I shouldn't have run it without a heat sink for that long. Not good. <laughs> well, it was working. Ugh. I guess now I'm going to uh, have to fix it one more time. I really don't think I should have done it that quickly without a heat sink, but anyway, let's try again. Attempt number two. I replaced that transistor with another one. This is a different transistor, but it very closely matches the specifications. So it's just a 60 volt N channel MOSFET. Um, Anyway, that's not important. So I have it connected up all the same, except I put this heat sink on this time, which apparently I should have done the first time. Usually they don't get hot that quickly, and the way that that thing failed was a little suspicious. It almost looked like someone had cut the leads and then re tried to resolder it. I don't really know. It's possible that they just fused open. But uh, on this side, I fixed the improper mounting on those. And on this side, I just returned that heat sink around so that the uh, ends that were bowed out are now bowed in. So everything should be mounted properly now. And let's try this same thing one more time.